Well, Jon Stewart is back. Yes, the man who turned The Daily Show into a cultural religion is returning to destroy any goodwill he has left. This comes after Trevor Noah's seven-year run ended in 2022. My theory is that the network was just losing too much money. And this is a theory many people were willing to accept because of racism. And the show had a revolving door of guest hosts in 2023, including Michelle Wolf, Chelsea Handler, and Leslie Jones. But none of them got the job permanently. I guess those three will have to return to their previous job as the witches from Macbeth. I'm sure when John walked back in, that set smelled crazy. Stewart will be back on Mondays through the end of the year, which is going to make Garfield that much more relatable. Monday the most horrible, awful nightmare of a day in the whole week. At least the network execs are excited. Showtime's Chris McCarthy said, John Stewart is the voice of our generation. But John Stewart was born in 1962, the year before the Kennedy assassination, seven years before the moon landing, when the hottest single of the year was this. If they wanted the voice of our generation, they'd give the show to the TikTok text-to-speech girl. My name is Kat Callahan. Jon Stewart first graced The Daily Show stage in 1999 at age 36 with MTV and Comedy Central gigs under his belt. Fast forward nearly a decade after Stewart's departure and none of the late night hosts are particularly young. And ratings for the remaining old guard keep drifting lower every year. At this point, they're just the world's most expensive YouTube channels. No, they don't even have that. This is a $250 million private island. People think of Jon Stewart as being an example of pre-woke late night, back when comedy shows were all about the funny. But he was plenty subversive for his time. During the Bush years, he could do his anti-moral majority shtick because it at least looked like the Republicans were in charge of the country. Then when Obama came into office, it became obvious that he was just a propaganda boy for the revolution. He'd hit Obama, but not in the same way. Republicans were evil Satans, and Obama was great, but maybe a little timid at times. This was seen as hitting both sides. People watched Jon Stewart not as a sub supplement to the news or as a commentary on the news, but as the news. One online poll said he was our most trusted news source. He shaped the worldviews of countless millennials. An entire generation of ironic mustachioed grad students turned to him for their daily dose of soy laughs. His arguments didn't stand up to scrutiny, but they didn't have to. He was on the side of power. And he wasn't worse than any other media, they just couldn't be as brazen. That's why they loved him so much. He was their id. Early on, his biggest cultural moment was an appearance on Tucker Carlson's CNN show. I'm here to, to confront you. At the time, it was seen as a huge victory for Stewart and a big L for Tucker. But now, Tucker is more relevant than ever, and Stewart is Uncle Rico. These days, every late-night comedian is openly partisan. Crying Jimmy Kimmel, Seth Meyers' flaccid nightly rant, and this stuff. How's everybody feeling tonight? <laughs> that, that is because you are vaccinated. And we can thank Jon Stewart for that. This also shows that the regime is desperate. It's like Michael Jordan playing for the Washington Wizards. Yeah, he got the team some attention, but at bottom, it's just kind of sad. Jon Stewart had real cultural power at The Daily Show, and he hasn't had much since. Did you know he wrote and directed two movies? Me either. And his Apple TV show got canceled. There, Stewart did the exact same thing he used to, so I guess audiences can expect more of this trenchant analysis. The problem with white people. <laughs> Now they're reinstalling him at Comedy Central to try and get some of that electricity back. At this point, Late Night can't pretend to be the rebel anymore. Their number one job right now is propping up Joe Biden. Number go up equal good. But why would they take on as their primary responsibility propping up an empty suit, a husk that's well past his time, an obvious puppet for the regime? Got it. The sad thing is, this is them trying their hardest. People think that late night used to be good, then it got political and not funny. And yes, it has gotten worse. The times have changed, the hosts have changed, Conan and Letterman weren't ever really big on political comedy. But now everything is political. Conflict is everywhere, and that's reflected in our media. Their jobs have gotten harder since it's becoming more and more difficult to pretend that they're not on the side of power. Reinstalling Jon Stewart is a desperate play. This is them putting up the bat signal. This is not what a regime does when it's strong. To change the metaphor, this is a Hail Mary, and they're pinning all their hopes on their old star player. It's a big burden to carry. Just try not to throw your back out, eh, John? Remember, lift with your knees. 